So good morning, everyone. So I'll be starting with the class. Okay, really sorry for the delay. Uh, okay. So uh, I'll be sharing the screen now. Okay, uh, we'll be starting and we'll try to complete this module today. And that is the reason why I uh, asked you all to re-log in because I want complete 40 minutes to complete this uh, module. Okay, nothing much to discuss because we have already discussed many things about the HR scorecard. Now we are just going to uh, um, maybe some uh, some things we are going to repeat in different ways, but uh, let's understand how it is done. Okay, so uh, I'll be sharing the screen now. Just confirm if the screen is visible. Yes. Can you see the screen? Is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, it is visible. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so in the previous class, we have already completed this, I guess. No, sorry, not this. Uh, we have already completed the features of workforce uh, scorecard. What are the various features that it is linked with uh, rewards? Then it requires training to be provided to the employees. Then it talks about individual strategies, that is, a linkage between strategies, the individual and the company strategies, then objectives, individual objectives and company's objectives, and also shared processes between the managers and individuals. Okay, so uh, next one is the components. What does this HR scorecard includes? What are the various elements or what are the various components of HR scorecard? First one is workforce success. Okay, so it tries to measure the success of the workforce in terms of the bottom line again. Now, bottom line, bottom line is nothing but the profits that uh, the company is generating or the productivity that the employee is providing, okay, in terms of achieving the goals of the objective. That is, that def defines the success of a workforce. That defines the success of the employees of the organization. So it tries to measure the workforce success. It tries to measure the workforce mindset and culture. Now, normally mindset depends on the culture in the organization. Always remember, okay, a particular behavior of an individual or an employee, okay, depends entirely on what is the culture in the organization. So you key, you bend yourself as per the culture. Okay. For example, let's say we take a say, we take example of your own class. Okay. We have different uh, people from different uh, sections of the society like uh, we have uh, people or different states different uh, different cities okay and if you see the be the behavioral pattern is different right uh, people from uh, let's say not uh, from belgam their behavioral pattern there are there are many common attributes to their behavior so they behave in a different manner because they have been brought up in that particular culture People from, let's say, uh, Bijapur or Bagalkot and that particular belt, they have a particular pattern of behavior. People from Goa have a different pattern of behavior. But if you want to group them, you can definitely group them because they have lots of common behavioral patterns that they display. Okay, And that is because of the culture. So workforce uh, scorecard also tries to measure the culture and its impact on the behavior or the mindset of the uh, employee what is what what kind of mindset he is into okay because of the culture that is there in the organization so whether that culture is good or bad can be easily found out using a workforce scorecard because the culture have has a direct impact on the mindset of an individual if the culture is not very good if the culture is bad definitely the mindset also would be a very negative you have a negative mindset you have a negative uh, approach to all the things okay because of the culture again Right. And if the culture is really positive and everything is going on really well, okay, uh, it's encouraging, the culture is very encouraging, then yes, your mindset is also very positive. You tend to do lots of positive things or you think in a positive manner. So that is how workforce scorecard helps you in measuring how your culture is and how is it uh, impacting the uh, mindset of an individual employee or the workforce in general. Okay. Next one is it also measures the workforce competency. Now, competencies are the skills, okay, skills that um, any individual would be having, like uh, competency, maybe I'm good at uh, communication is my competency, okay, I'm good at writing, that is my competency, I'm good at convincing people, that becomes my competency, okay, 
or uh, I can wor uh, work for longer hours. That is my competency. Okay, or I can uh, solve problem. Problem solving is my competency. So these are the skills and competency. So uh, this workforce scorecard also measures the skills and competencies of the employees of the organization, or in simple words, workforce of the organ in the organization. Okay. Next one is leadership and workforce behavior. Okay. Now. Uh, definitely leaders leaders would have an impact on the work uh, the people working under them right it de entirely depends on how the leader is okay if the leader is uh, let's say there are different types of leader like author autocratic re leader democratic leader and so on and so forth right the way the leader behaves the way the leader treats the employees or the subordinates the behavior of the subordinates automatically has an impact on that or changes. Okay. They try to, uh, the, they know what the leader expects. Okay. And accordingly, they need to, or uh, they change themselves. They know what the leader is, how the leader is, and accordingly, they change it. So it also tries to understand the workforce scorecard, also tries to understand how the leader is, what are the qualities that the leader has. Okay. What type of leader he is. And what is the impact of that on the behavior of the workforce? Okay, so that is also measured in a workforce uh, scorecard. So these are the four components that uh, workforce scorecard measures. That is success, mindset and culture, competencies, and uh, leadership and uh, workforce behavior. Okay, so these are the four components that it measures generally. Okay, and overall when they are measuring this, okay, one thing is fixed is, how this is um, uh, contributing to the achievement of the goals of the organization. Okay, ultimately that is the objective of workforce scorecard. That whether the HR practices, whether 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 various HR functions are able to contribute to the uh, goals of the organization or no. Okay, so that is the main uh, link that is created in a workforce scorecard with these four components. Okay, um, are you all clear with this? Please give a thumbs up quickly. We don't want to waste time. Let's move on to the next one. If it is clear. Is it clear, everyone? Yes or no? Okay, fine. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. That is, how do we implement this HR scorecard? Or sorry, workforce scorecard. Or HR scorecard in general, okay? Uh, there are three challenges that you face uh, when you are actually <coughs> implementing the workforce scorecard. Okay, the three challenges are namely the perspective challenge, metrics challenge, and the execution challenge. Okay, now let us try to understand what are these uh, in type of a question. Okay, I'll just uh, read out this question for you. That will make it more clear. Like perspective challenge means what? Do all our managers understand the workforce capabilities and behaviors? driving strategic execution okay do they really understand how these uh, workforce uh, capabilities and behavior drive the uh, execution of strategies that is the first one do they have the perspective do they are, are they understanding do are the managers understanding how are they affecting how is the workforce capabilities having an impact on the behavior and in turn the strategy of the organization that is the first challenge whether they are really are aware of it, whether they really know what it is. Second one is the matrix challenge. Now matrix challenge is finding out the right measures or the right tool. Okay. You have to find out the right tool to measure a particular function or the right matrix to uh, measure a particular function. So that is another challenge that you face because there are hundreds of matrix matrices or metrics which are available. So which is the best one, which is the best metrics or which is the most appropriate, not the best, but let us say which is the most appropriate metrics is what you need to understand. That is another challenge that you face when you are implementing a workforce scorecard or a HR scorecard. Third one is the execution challenge. Now, uh, when you, uh, okay, you have decided, okay, these are the tools that you're going to use or these are the metrics that you're going to use. Now comes execution whether your managers have that capability of executing the uh, tools, whether uh, the proper motivation is given or they are motivated to use the data in the right manner to uh, achieve the objectives of the organization. That is the third challenge execution. 
whether they can do it whether they have the ability whether they are uh, they have the motivation and the capabilities of executing the hr scorecard or the uh, results or the data that is provided and the inferences that you get whether you are able to implement those whether you have the capability to implement those becomes the challenge okay so these are the three challenges that you face when you are implementing a workforce scorecard then let us move on to the steps for implementation okay very simple steps first one is development of clear statement and strategic capabilities needed okay you have you need to know where you need to reach the first thing is development of clear statement what you want to achieve that has to be very clear second is strategic capabilities required now to reach there what are the capabilities that you require okay you say okay i want to reach here this at uh, this particular point now to reach that point what are the capabilities required have to be properly defined okay that is the first step development of statement and defining the capabilities required second one is key jobs or positions and performance now what is this key job is you have to identify the key jobs or positions and the performance uh, of that particular that will be required to execute that particular job okay what is the performance that is required to execute that particular job is to be identified so key jobs most important jobs and positions have to be identified and what is the performance that is expected from these jobs and position have to be clearly defined or identified and the last one is needed competencies and behavior so to achieve those uh, objectives of the organizations of the key jobs or the positions what are the uh, and the performance that is required from you what are the various competencies that you have and what kind of behavior that you need to uh, showcase has to be properly uh, defined okay that is or it has to be changed if it is not correct then it has to change that is what is the last step that is execution step again we ca call it as okay so needed what are the competencies or the skills required to achieve those objectives to fulfill the uh, performance of that particular job or position so that is what competencies is and required the behavior that you need to showcase so that you achieve those goals and objectives that are set for you and the organization has to be properly uh, defined or properly implemented that is what is the last step of implementation of workforce scorecard so starting from development of clear statement and capabilities to key uh, identifying the key jobs positions and performance to execution that is needed competency what are the competencies required and the behavior that we need to showcase so this this is what implementing the workforce scorecard is okay going ahead i hope you are clear with the previous one that is implementing the three challenges and the three steps in implementation okay guys if you are clear give a thumbs up quickly very nice i guess some people are still sleeping or they have not they are not understanding uh, i do, i'm i am not sure about it are you all clear okay guys fine so let's move on to the next part that is guidelines for creating workforce scorecard what are the various uh, guidelines these are just guidelines these are not mandatory steps that you need to follow these are just guidelines that you need to follow so that your scorecard is appropriate okay so first one is know the purpose why are you preparing that scorecard you need to know the purpose of it okay i'm not going to go into detail because this is quite self explanatory that is you need to know the purpose so why are you really uh, preparing that hr scorecard second one is in information obtained is accurate yes the information that you get from the employees should be accurate to arrive at the correct results from the scorecard the information that you give to the scorecard should be accurate the input the data that you uh, put into the system that is input data should be really accurate then only you will get the results uh, accurately okay then analyze the system of the scorecard yes you have to properly analyze the system how it works okay what what all things are required okay what, then uh, uh, basically understanding the relationship between the different components of the scorecard and getting the inferences from that particular scorecard is what is analysis all about okay so basically you need to analyze the system of the scorecard properly that is the third guideline fourth one is limited and unlimited values now every uh, scorecard uh, every employee has a certain limited value attached to it or unlimited value attached to the uh, scorecard to 
to the uh, sorry uh, performance okay there is um, you expect uh, okay uh, just give me one minute okay yes uh, so uh, basically limited and unlimited means what it talks about the performance of the employee okay uh, so uh, whether it is limited to whatever is given to them or that performance is unlimited like um, the employee is doing something else than what was expected something else uh, doesn't mean that he is doing something different okay something else means he is doing something extra okay suppose a task was given to him and you do something extra than what is required which is beneficial to the organization that is unlimited value so what is the value that a particular employee is creating to the organization whether it is limited to only what is told to him or whether he is going uh, one step ahead and doing something better than what has been told to him so that is what limited and unlimited values is that is also um, to be checked using a workforce scorecard and regularly evaluate past and present scorecards okay you have to always keep on comparing the past and the present scorecards in order to understand whether you are uh, growing whether you are um, there is an incremental growth or you are uh, you are progressing or you are not progressing basically so you need to regularly evaluate the past scorecard performance with the present scorecard performance okay that is your fifth guideline so are you all clear with this guideline is everybody clear i'll give you two minutes time or oh, sorry one minute time to think whether it is clear if it is clear give a thumbs up so that i can go ahead with the next part okay so i guess uh, this is very clear very general in nature okay so let's move on to the next part that is the hr analytics framework in which we have something called as a lamps framework okay now let us understand what is this lamps framework okay lamps framework basically uh, talks about l a m p so these are the three four elements that has been considered in a lamps framework okay so starting from logic okay uh, we'll start from this okay starting from okay i'll use the annotations just a minute okay starting from logic that is l okay so the right logic rational talent strategy that is competitive advantage talent pivot points etc okay so you are you are trying to understand uh, the basically whatever talent you have okay so what are, what is the uh, are they are they really able to uh, create a connection between different elements okay uh, that means uh, do they have the right logic to execute the strategies so that is your logic the right uh, the, that talks about the right logic whether you are logical enough in executing the strategies whether you are logical enough in understanding the relationship between different elements and you are logical enough in taking decisions logically in the organization that is all about the right logic la uh, rational talent strategy okay that means when you are thinking logically that means you are thinking rationally next one is analytics the right analytics that is valid questions and results okay analysis also uh, always talks about questions and results okay whether you are ask uh, you are able to ask the right questions to the data okay we are talking about analytics so we are asking questions to the data okay we are not asking questions to people over here whether you are properly asking questions to the data that means whether you are putting the data into the right manner okay and are you getting the expected results from it okay that means are you using the right analytical tool in uh, in understanding the inferences or the outcomes of that particular analysis is what is uh, uh, what we have to do in this second uh, that is required okay that is analytics so that is a then comes your right measures and sufficient data okay whether you have the right tools to measure the data whether the data is sufficient or no so that is that is the th th third thing that you do in a lamp framework that is whether you have the right measures that is the right tools to measure the data and whether the data that you have is sufficient whether it is timely available it is reliable and uh, whether it is timely reliable and available so this all talks about the measures okay that is l a m m this is m that is measures whether you have the right tools and last one is 
P that talks about the process. So whether you have the right process to execute whatever or to implement whatever suggestions have you have got from the analysis or whatever is your inferences from the analysis, whether you will be able to execute them. Okay, that is what is the right process. Okay, so it talks about the values, culture and influences that that, that, that is the entire process of HR manage HR uh, human resource management. Okay, so whether you have the right process to implement all these uh, strategies that you have um, formulated, okay, based on the data that you have analyzed. Okay, that is what is the right process. So HR metrics are and analytics that are a force of strategy change. Okay, we basically, so when we talk about LAMP, it is logic, analytics, whether you're logical, whether you're analytical, whether you're using the right tool, and whether you have the right process to implement the strategies or the implement the inferences that you've got from the analysis. Okay, that is what is called as the LAMP framework. Okay, so this is how you uh, judge the HR analytics framework, okay, whether the analytics used in your organization is uh, proper or no, okay, that uh, uh, to, to judge that you use this LAMP framework, okay, so are you clear, any doubts in any of these four uh, parameters or four elements or four components of the LAMP framework? So is it important question? I'm asking you to ask me doubt not. Is it important? So I'm just asking you. So like it will come like for exams like. If I set the paper, I'll definitely put it. In <laughs> no, sir. Like last years and all. No, that is what I'm telling. If I if I set the paper <laughs> this time, I'll definitely put it in the final exam. <laughs> so now you are understanding what is uh, whether it is important or no. Definitely, yes, sir. Definitely, it is important. Okay, the LAMP framework is important. Okay, so you can go through lots of text which is available. You can use the textbook. You can use the internet because on the internet the LAMP framework is available. They have explained it really well. Okay, so you can uh, for further references. Just, I'm just giving you a hint about what it is. That is, you need to be logical. You need to know the vital connections between the variables. That is logic. Then you need to use the proper analytical tools or getting the numbers right is what analytics talks about then measures is basically finding answers in the data whether you are able to use the right tool to get the uh, inferences from the data that is there okay whether you are uh, whether the data is sufficient or no all these things is measures and last one is the process where uh, where you have the right process to implement the inferences that you have got from the above frame above uh, process okay that is what is the right process whether you have the right process to implement the strategies or implement the inferences that you've got from the analysis that you have done okay so are you clear with this now everyone if it is clear please give a thumbs up so that i can go ahead with the next part is it clear or no Zora, is it clear? Yes, sir. Saraswati? Rangoli? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So should yes, I go, okay. at, go ahead okay. with the next part? Yes, sir. Okay, just we are left with a few parts now, a few uh, slides, I guess. Uh, okay, I don't know on which slide I am right now. Okay, but. Uh, there are hardly any slide, uh, uh, hardly few slides which are remaining. So we'll try to complete it. And since they are very general in nature, so I'll be going a bit fast. If I'm going a bit fast and you're not understanding, please um, stop me and ask those doubts. Okay. So now we are going ahead with the HR maturity framework. Okay. In this, we basically talks about uh, talk about the six pillars of HR, HR maturity. Okay. The uh, what are those six pillars is first one is organizational effectiveness okay whether the organizational organization is effective enough in implementing the strategies or no whether the organization is um, working in an effective manner okay i have told you there is a difference between efficient and effectiveness okay so i am talking about effectiveness over here whether the strategies that are adopted whether the uh, uh, 
decisions that are taken, whether they are effective in um, achieving the goals and objectives of the organization or no, that has to be checked. Okay, that is the first pillar. That means you need to have proper organizational effectiveness. Your organization should be effective in caliber and talent. The people that you have hired or the people working in your organization should have the right caliber to deliver and they should be the right talent to that particular job, That the best person to do that particular job which he's been assigned to. Okay, so that is what caliber and talent talks about. Third one is employee engagement. Yes, employee engagement becomes a very important part because unless your employees are engaged, you will not be able to achieve lower turnovers or lower attrition rates. So there should be a proper uh, employee engagement activities that should be conducted in your organization so that employees are constantly engaged and they feel uh, as, if, as, uh, as if they are a part of the organization. So employee engagement activities should be a, a integral part of your HR strategies, okay? Next one is performance management system. Yes, definitely. Uh, you cannot just uh, appra give an appraisal to someone, you increase his salary or decrease his salary. Just like that, there should be a proper performance management system. That is what, uh, what is the performance of each and every individual in terms of the goal set, the targets given to that particular individual and your entire system should be performance based, okay? And uh, next one is the rewards and recognition. Again, rewards and recognition should be based on the performance. It is not on the base, uh, be, uh, on the basis of favoritism. Okay, it is. It should be purely based on performance. Okay, so that is uh, that that is what makes your HR framework or HR analytics more uh, powerful when you follow these six pillars. Okay, these are the six pillars which are really important to make your HR practices successful. Okay. Last one, uh, re uh, rewards and recognition is done. Last one is employee development. That talks about training of the employees. So there should be proper training provided to the employees so that they develop in terms of uh, knowledge and skills and competencies, as well as in terms of their um, uh, pay scales and uh, packages and et cetera. Because once, once they upgrade their skills and um, competencies, naturally they are going to go a level up and they are going to get more salaries and all. So employee development in terms of uh, knowledge, in terms of monetary should be uh, taken care by the HR to ensure that uh, the organization goals are achieved. So these are the six important pillars of HR maturity. Okay, starting from organizational effectiveness, how effective is your organization? It should be very much effective. Uh, there should be right talent and caliber. The, there should be employment engagement activities. There, sh there should be a proper performance management system in your organization to evaluate the performance of individuals. Rewards and recognition should be based on the performance. Okay. And last one is there should be proper trainings provided to ensure that the employee develop in terms of um, knowledge as well as in terms of money or financial benefits. Okay. So these are the six pillars. Okay. Uh, are you all clear with all these six pillars? of HR maturity framework? Yes, no? Mm. Yes, sir. Dhanashri, don't, uh, don't speak while eating. Okay. Yes, uh, so let's move on to the next one. That is uh, the levels of HR maturity. So if you see, we start with uh, inconsistent management that is uh, repeatable practices level one it is initial okay so how they uh, how they mature understand Th this is a very simple uh, uh, framework we can understand okay uh, this is basically called as the people capability maturity model okay it is called as the people capability maturity model I have not mentioned it on the slide you can just uh, make a note of it it is people capability maturity model how the capability matures okay first one is level one it is initial that is inconsistent management so lots of repeatable practices happen then level two is managed that is people management it talks about people management so competencies based on practices uh, develop uh, competencies based on the practices here most of the work is repeatable in nature so there is no competency development here but here, uh, your, you change your practices. There are lots of uh, uh, lots of things that you do extra. So your competency increases over here. Next one is uh, level three, which is more defined as to what has been done. This is just managed, okay? Initial is nothing. 
this is just managed uh, here it is well defined okay so comp here we talk about competency management which measure uh, measured and empowered practices here you have lots of measured and empowered practices that you follow okay see the growth from repeatable practices that is the same doing the same work again and again to base uh, competency based practices so you showcase some competencies then here you have the measured and empowered practices where you are uh, your uh, uh, decisions your work is measured and you are empowered by uh, giving responsibilities and uh, delegation of work happens over here so competency management happens then here is predictable that is capability management okay how much capable you are so based on the capabilities uh, you go on get doing more and more work okay so continuously improving practices that is that is what is capability management which leads to change management that is optimizing the most the highest level of maturity is optimizing now you're optimizing means you're trying to achieve the best optimum optimum is the most favored okay so you try to optimizing by change management okay there you're changing your practices then you're changing your procedures and processes and you're trying to achieve the optimum uh, level of uh, maturity okay that is what the levels of maturity talks about so i'm repeating this is a people capability maturity model that we speak about okay so uh, coming uh, going from an inconsistent management to people management to competency management to capability management and finally going to the change management are you clear with all these five levels of maturity yes no guys are you really clear your understanding i understand i'm going a, a bit faster today compared to the previous classes because most of the things we have already studied i need not tell you all these things in detail now because we have discussed a lot about frameworks about hr analytics about hr so i'm just telling you the various steps and trying to explain it in brief i hope you're understanding it if you are understanding it please give a thumbs up quickly we are left with just 7 minutes and uh, we are it to do another 2 3 uh, slides i guess okay i don't remember the numbers exactly are you clear if you are clear please give a thumbs up quickly so that i can continue with the next part if there are doubts please unmute yourself and ask those doubts don't do not hesitate are you all clear with this levels of hr maturity starting from initial to manage to define to predictable and finally it is optimizing yes no if yes give a thumbs up quickly guys nobody is responding as hardly four students are responding every time i don't know what is the issue okay fair enough um, i'll take it as you have understood what i'm uh, talking about okay let's move on to the uh, H hcm 21 framework okay so uh, what is this hcm 21 framework is basically this is the hr framework human resource management framework for the 21st century 21 doesn't mean that there will be 21 points okay 21 talks about the 21st century what is required in the 21st century okay so there are four phases okay uh, four phases in this particular framework first one is scanning planning producing and predicting can somebody tell me what is scanning guys what is scanning okay uh, let's not waste time i i don't know what has happened to you all today nobody is responding uh, finding out the pitfalls in the system scanning Swapnil, you are not uh, clearly audible. Ah, uh, so finding out the pitfalls in the system. Ah, uh, yes. Scanning. It's not only it's not only finding out the pitfall in the system. Basically, uh, scanning to uh, scanning is all about your SWOT analysis. Try uh, trying to understand the environment. Okay, trying to understand the environment. You scan the environment, trying to find out the ah uh, not detecting the features exactly, Rohan. but yes it is about um, finding out what is happening in the environment internally and externally uh, yes um, yes scanning is exactly how it is the same okay fine okay so that is what scanning is all about that is understanding what is happening 
uh, in the organization and outside the organization Sc scanning the environment okay internal environment and the external environment that is what scanning talks about so on the basis of the scanning you know what is internally what are your strengths and weaknesses what are your opportunities and threats that is in general i'm talking okay you scan the environment now you know what it is next one is you try to plan according to it okay now you know the situation you plan according to that situation so that is your planning phase next one is producing okay you have planned now you implement it that is what producing talks about okay so once you have planned go according to the plan execute your plan in simple words that is what producing talks about okay that is having your own processes and the systems to achieve the goals and objectives based on the plans and based on the scanning that you have done that is the uh, analysis of the environment that you have done and last one is predicting that is uh, what would happen in future trying to predict the future and work accordingly that is the fourth uh, step in the H uh, hcm21 framework okay so this is how you can use the hcm21 framework for better human resource management better human resource uh, implementation as uh, strategic implementation and management okay so the four pillars here are four phases not pillars here there the six pillars were there here there are four phases one is scanning planning producing and predicting is it clear to everyone okay going to the next one okay uh, what is happening okay next one is the talent talent ship framework it is also called as the finance marketing and talent ship framework where if you see uh, there is nothing to explain about but if you see here this is finance marketing and talent ship that is hr let's say okay equity assets sales and profit okay you have equity that is collection of funds you purchase assets because uh, from this you produce you sell and you make profits here you invest in uh, the marketing four p's of marketing what are the four p's of marketing quickly guys four p's of marketing guys four p's of marketing do not type in the chat box <coughs> time price place product, product, product promotion place price promotion place and promotion right promotion that is what in, you invest into all those things so mix of four p's then you set the stp analysis if you remember the stp analysis that is segmenting targeting and and positioning right segmenting targeting and positioning is what you talk about okay and then you get the you uh, basically you create customer value and you get lifetime profits that is marketing whereas here uh, if we, here, here you invest into uh, talent ship means here you invest into hr human resource you program and you have programs and practices for those human resource then uh, you develop them you make them effective because of your training okay you make them effective so you have the organization and the talent and that impacts in sustainable strategic success okay so you uh, first invest into hr hr provide them training make them effective and then achieve success that is what talent talent ship framework talks about so this is the finance talent ship framework this is for marketing and this is for hr okay coming to the last one um, yes this is the last slide okay i don't know whether i'll be able to do it okay four uh, possible components of effective analytic frameworks okay overarching is uh, possible we can say okay tools patterns model forms techniques and uh, skills and categorization okay we are left with less than a minute i'll take this in the next class so this is the last slide but i'll take it in the next class i don't want to hurry up and finish it off i hope you are clear with whatever is covered so far except the last slide which i did not cover at all 